One of the bonuses of the Cloth Techniques Training DVD is that we've thrown in a couple of freebie plug-in modifiers for you, specifically for use with cloth and cloth effects. Um, the first one is called Intersect, the second one is called Wrap It, and uh, basically you'll find them on the DVD media itself in a subfolder called Plugins, and uh, there's a set for Max 4 and Max 5, and another one for Max 6 slash 7. And there are no installers, you simply drop the plugins themselves into your plugins folder with inside of Max, and then relaunch the software, and you'll find them under the modifier tab. So, in this case, what I'm going to start out with is Intersect, which is a handy little diagnostic tool that can uh, help you with interpenetrations of your cloth. So, right now, I've basically got Garment Maker on this piece of cloth, and I'm going to go ahead and actually add cloth effects to it. Make it cloth, and I'm going to select the geosphere and make it a collision object, small offset. And I'm just going to run the default simulation. Now I've got a uh, faceted material on here right now so that we can see all the different faces. And by default, you know, we start looking at some of this. We're going to start to see interpenetrations as these panels come together and slide down in here and whatnot. It's not going to be terribly, terribly smooth, but you know, one of the things that some people do is they turn on self-collision, they turn on check intersections. And not only will this generally slow down just about any simulation, so as I start this, you'll notice as the springs start to come together, and then a lot of times the simulation is going to fail just because it, it can't help but uh, have cloth interpenetrating and things like that. So in many instances, I'll turn off check uh, intersections, I'll use intersect instead. I'm going to put it on top and then I'm going to throw on top of it an edit mesh. And you'll see why in a second. Let's go into edged face mode and then re-simulate. And I'll let it finish up like that. And what's interesting is that if I go to my intersect modifier and I start turning on the number of loops, you'll start to see these little dots appearing around various areas of your mesh to kind of indicate some problems. And you'll notice that as I do this, the mesh tends to bubble a little bit as I'm playing it back. So when I do this, you'll see that these areas kind of act peculiarly, not in a very cloth-like fashion. Well, that's because intersect is actually pushing those vertices away from one another. So here to here, this next frame, you've got this vertice being, being pushed. And then more of them are being affected. And a lot of times you don't want that kind of ugly behavior and what's interesting is, let me zoom in on something like this. If I turn off intersect, you'll see the vertices that it is referring to in here, in this mesh. And you can see this is a total jumble as these things tend to pass through one another. And with intersect on, it's starting to over affect them. So what I may want to do instead of that is use intersect as kind of a Let's actually go to the first layer. So there we go. So we've got all these, these intersections occurring. And you can see these are the vertices affected. Now what I can do is go into Edit Mesh, and it's going to show me how this thing, if I turn it on and off, how that vertex is being adjusted. Now what I may want to do instead is use that information, in fact maybe this information, to grab this vertex and manipulate it manually just so it's not quite so blatant. And what I would want to do at that point is go back down to cloth effects, hit grab state, which is going to push it because I've got edit mesh, so it's basically double acting again. It's grabbed the state and now the vertex is being moved again. So if I turn this off, now the vertex is where I might want it. I can truncate the simulation to that frame and simulate forward. 
Now, of course, I don't have any collisions on, so that's probably not a good thing, but you'll notice that the cloth did move exactly as I expected here to here. And so intersect can become a very handy diagnostic tool when it comes to to finding out where these locations are for interpenetrations and collisions and things like that. So let's actually go into wireframe mode and you can see that they start to pick up all over the place. And it tends to color code them by how long they've been intersected, if they're staying intersecting, and uh, so on. So it's pushing these verts around and whatnot. So keep that in mind as you use intersect to to try and uh, adjust your models. This is really good for collars and, and sleeves and uh, creases around armpits and things like that where you'd want to edit the mesh, recapture a state by using the grab state button and then resim truncating and resimulating from that point forward to make sure that your mesh behaves. So if you get a vertex or a point in your cloth that is uh, way out of, of kilter, so let's grab all these verts and wait. So maybe to right there, scoot all those over and up. And of course, considering I'm just using a standard edit mesh, I could probably just use soft selection and make this a hell of a lot easier, but just to prove the point. So I'll go back down to cloth effects, grab the state, minimize that, turn that off, truncate, simulate forward. So now I've managed to move that cloth away from where it was before. So that's the intersect modifier, a little bitty handy handy dandy tool that can kind of show you where you've got problem areas in your mesh and uh, make it so that you can diagnose those issues and keep them from becoming a real problem. Though as I, as I said before, you don't want to have this modifier at the top of the stack. You want, you know, running all the time because you're going to get this kind of unnatural natural bubbling on there. Next we're going to look at the uh, rapid modifier. Now for Mac 6 and Mac 7 users who have skin wrap this modifier might not necessarily be um, terribly important to you because you've got more power within skin wrap but for Max 4 and Max 5 users rapid is certainly um, a well uh, a welcome addition. In this case I've got a, an arm and let's say you've got this very highly detailed arm and you certainly wouldn't want to sim against something like that just because of all the geometry uh, associated with it. So what Rapid allows you to do 